a lot of reactions to the to the DNC convention, as you know. And one of the good fallouts, one of the good things from it is that some progressives get an opportunity to come on network cable news and be able to speak their truth to power. One of those such people is none other than our friend Senator Nina Turner. Senator Nina Turner appeared on CNN with Anderson Cooper to discuss the hopes, the dreams of Bernie supporters, and where do we go from here? But over the last week, the Democrats held the darkest and angriest and gloomiest convention in American history. They spent four straight days attacking America as racist and a horrible country that must be redeemed. I mean, I, I guess what, what else would he say? But oh, I'm wondering what you make of it. Are you reading my mind, Anderson? I mean, the country does need to be redeemed. I don't know which convention he was looking at, though. But this country definitely needs to be redeemed. This country is racist. It's rooted in racism. And when we talk about the story of immigration, it's not some pretty picture. It is a country that was founded on the backs and the blood and the sweat and the tears of enslaved Africans and then the first generation born on this soil of African Americans for generations. It is a nation that stole the land from indigenous people. I mean, come on, we're trying to get there to those high ideas, but we're not quite there yet. So I'm not surprised that President Trump would paint the Democratic Convention in that way. That is what he does. He is delusional if, if, if he thinks that it is okay to write revisionist history. It's not okay for him to do it as a Republican, and it's not okay for Democrats to do it either. Anderson, 92 million people in this country do not have their either uninsured or underinsured. We really do. People are crying out, and as you know, the pandemic, wiping people out left and right, whether literally or through their livelihoods. We have an opportunity, if it is taken, to show that the Democratic Party will be the one not to answer to the corporate interests. There are 12 billionaires, Anderson, in this country who are at a tw trillion dollars. They control a trillion dollars worth of wealth. Meanwhile, back on Main Street, people are catching all kinds of hell. So we people who are going to stand up for the poor, the working poor, and the better, a barely middle class in this country, and it's, be it's bigger than having BLM blocks behind you or quoting or, or mentioning Ella Baker's name. It is living up to those high ideas and the, and the principles by which those freedom fighters fought for. This is the time to do that. People need it. Yeah, so that's why we love Dina Turner because she's always so powerful in her speech and she always speaks truth to power. And and look, I just want to I want to piggyback a little bit off of what Nina Turner said here. You know, first of all, that convention they didn't talk about race, man. They talked about unless they were using it in order to prop up a platitude or two or three or a hundred. That's what this convention consisted of mainly. So I don't know, like she says, I don't know what convention Donald Trump was watching. Maybe it was a convention of ants crawling around his forehead or I don't know some spiders trying to form to trying to you know control his wig or I don't know keep his toupee in place but the convention that I saw did not embody was not talking about what America was and in fact it was talking about an America a magical America that doesn't exist that has never existed that will somehow come into existence if only we put as Alex would say the guy who can't find his keys and can't make it home from the mall in the White House. Like, suddenly that guy's going to right the ship and make all things right. But I do want to talk a little bit about the race element because this just happened, okay? So you remember these these, these white ladies, the famous actresses who got arrested for the scam, uh, you know, spending, I don't know, $100,000 or something to get their kids into these Ivy League schools? One of them was named Lori Laughlin. Now, recently, Lori Laughlin had to pay the piper. That's right, she went to court. Now, Donald Trump would say America, the Democrats think America is so racist and so horrible and, you know, and they just shit on America. I don't know why we would think, I don't know why people would think that, you know, America's racist when we got Lori Laughlin, who got convicted of fraud, <laughs> got convicted of being a part of a fraudulent scheme. You know, she ends up getting two months in jail. Two months. And her husband, a designer, a fashion designer who's famous, he got a whopping five months in jail. That's right. Cumulative, totally, they will spend uh, five, seven months in jail, if you combine both their sentences, for f defrauding citizens out of a place and their kids out of a place to go to college. They stole that. Meanwhile, we got, there's a story of a Louisiana man named Fair Wayne Bryant. 
He's 62. Back in 1997, he was convicted of trying. He was unsuccessful, Johnson. He tried to steal some damn hedge clippers. He's been in jail since 1997. He's serving a life sentence for sen- for stealing, for trying to steal hedge clippers. But Donald Trump's right. And dumb, the dumb Democrats, are, dumb Democrats are trying to destroy. And they they paint America as racist and and corrupt. Well, I don't know where they get that idea from. Maybe because they read newspapers, maybe because they pay attention to what's going on, or maybe because they aren't lying scumbags. See, I'm not a part of the chorus of people who believe that Trump is okay because the Democrats suck. Now, I believe both parties suck, Johnson, because they do. You thought of Senator Sanders' uh, remarks uh, embracing uh, embracing Joe Biden, clearly asking his supporters to, um, to, to get Joe Biden elected. I mean, the senator was clear. He's a man of his word. He said it in 2016. He said it again in 2020. So the senator is doing what he does. But he created a movement. He was a spark. And the movement is the fire. And so the movement doesn't change. The, the notion that we need Medicare for all does not change. The notion that we need to legalize cannabis and take it off the of schedule one because it has ruined so many lives, particularly African-American lives with the war on drugs. Anderson, that doesn't change. The need to have college for all, that doesn't change. Environmental justice, see, none of those core fundamental issues change because it was never about a personality. It was more about the mission. And so progressives are still on the mission, understanding very clearly that we got two dragons, we got the slay. We got to slay the dragon of neo-fascism and slay the dragon of neoliberalism. And the progressive movement is here for it. In a term, I appreciate your time. Yeah, that's pretty much it. The dragon of neo-fascism, the dragon of neoliberalism. My thing is, Nina, I don't understand why people think we don't need to slay the dragon of neo-fascism. They try to underplay that. They downplay it as if it's not a problem. It is a problem. It is a problem. Look at the police state, look at it growing, okay? So, yeah, I thank Nina Turner for, for setting this straight because, you know, it just seemed to me like Anderson Cooper was kind of trying to bait her into going after uh, Bernie for doing what he said he would always do, which was uh, support the eventual nominee. So I don't think it's a sinister plot on Bernie's part to lose. I think he really wanted to win, hence heart attack on the on the field, trying to get it done. You think he wasn't feeling bad before he had a heart attack? Like, you don't believe that maybe there was some signs of, hey, I'm not feeling good? And he could have just said, hey, I, I'm not feeling good. I need to break it, you know, chill out. No, he kept going because unlike these people who keep saying these crazy thoughts, I think Bernie really b- believed that he could win and he wanted to win, and I believe he could win, and that's why I supported him. So I appreciate Nina Turner not taking the bait and hammering Bernie on that point. He's only doing what he said he'd do, and it's possible. It is possible. We should not make victims of everyone who believes that Donald Trump needs to go because there are very valid reasons for that. Supreme Court, they could say that. You could also say all the court conservative appointees that Trump's made across the board, but don't get it twisted. The Democrats have been lock, stock, and barrel, mostly behind all of the bad plans, all of the bad initiations done by Trump. So we need to fight it all, and it's a lot to do. It's a lot to do. All right. Woo, progressives, we got a job ahead of us, man. We got to stop. You know, we got, we need to work together when at all possible. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to say I ain't perfect. I'm willing to say there are things, the disagreements that we've had, maybe we need to look past those for the greater good of trying to do whatever we can. But my thing is others need to be the same way because I don't feel like everyone's on that same page. I mean, some people are doubling down on bullshit. I can't co-sign it. If people are willing to come to the negotiation table and we work together, I'm down. All right? But, because I understand the seriousness of what we're up against. And I don't want this entire movement to go to hell because people who are notable in the movement are too busy being pissed off at each other. So I'll leave that there. I'm trying to warm up to the idea. It's difficult because I'm tired of black issues not being center in this in in the discussion on the progressive left. I'm tired of that. I think it's a horrible mis miscalculation. And I think it needs to change. 